Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for ID People. I'm here at Wise Media's sixth EMEA Summit in Abu Dhabi, and I'm joined by Yuma Asiago from the United Nations. Yuma, thank you very much for joining, joining me. Pleasure, Pleasure to, to speak to you. I really enjoyed your presentation yesterday. I thought um, your approach was much more citizen-centric than, than, than a lot that we hear that are more government-centric and perhaps a bit more technology-centric as well. A couple of things you mentioned that I'd like to <coughs> expand on. One was the role of creativity, you know, really actually opening our minds up a little bit. How important do you think that is? I think um, it's overly important. I mean, if we begin to look at cities as human creations, we suddenly do already begin to talk about creativity. Mm. Um, and this means that uh, we are looking at across the population, not just ac across um, economic, social, or political divides. Uh, this also means that creativity from a holistic sense of the city must allow for populations to provide their insights, their thoughts. Mm. Uh, as to how they see innovations and innovations work for them. I talk about systems for people that emerges from creativity rather than people for systems. Okay, and you're representing the United Nations, the UN. What's the role of the U UN with this? Is your job to bring people together? Is it to create ideas? Is it to govern? Where, where does the UN sit in there? Well, I must say, all of that. Clearly the UN was established to support governments and to support governments um, move towards sustainable development options, mm -hmm. which means a new way of looking at what works for present generations as well as future generations. Mm -hmm. um, on our part at UN Habitat, we talk about how we improve cities and towns and villages to improve the quality of life of people. Okay. So we work to build the capacities of local government to work better with their populations and to put together city development strategies yeah. that work. Yeah. And it seems that urbanization is unstoppable. You know, the tendency of the population to move towards cities. Do you think there's, you know, a fundamental um, problem there or do you think that's just something natural that will continue? It will and it's beautiful. Uh, uh, we actually say that urbanization is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Most people look at urbanization as a bad outcome of development but for us urbanization is a source of development. Mm. Um, the world's urbanization is becoming global and globalization is urban. Yeah. So we are emphasizing the need to look at the advantage of what comes with urban and rather better plan, manage and govern cities. The, the actual crux of the matter is in the planning, in the management, in the governance of cities. Okay, and when government uh, deploy uh, these different ideas in, in their cities, they need to work with the private sector for technology, sometimes for funding, for all kinds of different things. Public-private becomes a very important partnership within the whole the whole situation. Is that something that you promote? Yeah, uh, but I'd go beyond just a public-private sector partnership. I'll say it's actually the new conceptions of local governance mm. as opposed to local government. It means that in today's world, it's not government alone that can actually find solutions. It must work with different stakeholders in a city. Uh, in a structured way around particular policy frameworks that make the city advance the public good. Okay. So, indeed, uh, the role of private sector is clearly one of those that can actually enhance this public good, mm. but must clearly fall within that framework that, uh, that local government or government, that is the statutory body, yeah. makes. Yeah, and another area that you talked about, and you talked then about um, local local government and, and city governance. You talked about decentralisation of um, of power of control. How important do you think that is in in the development of cities? Extremely important because decentralisation brings to the fore the need that the, the reality that there is no one size fits all solution. Mm. 
and that cities with their different cultural, socio-economic realities provide different solutions for their populations. It is important when decentralization is brought into play, you come to a level of analysis that is closest to the people and that brings out this new, creative, innovative ways that are peculiar and particular to a particular mm. population. Yeah. So decentralization is really the thing to do because then you begin to unearth the different potentials that exist within yeah. the heterogeneous communities that we are, or the yeah. heterogeneous society that we are. Yeah, and I guess as you drive the power down in a decentralized way, you drive it closer to the people, Absolutely. you drive it closer to that creativity you mentioned, and, and the whole thing starts to to gel together. To gel and synergize. Absolutely. Yeah. It empowers the individual yeah. to take action in his own city. It actually answers the question of identity and ownership. Mm. Whose city is it? Whose town is it? Yeah. And people begin to take responsibility for their yeah. own futures. Yeah. And that can only have a positive outcome. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, Yuma, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you for your time. I really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed your presentation. We'll I enjoyed the conference. Much appreciated.